Hello and welcome to PTZ Optics Live. We're live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 11 a.m. Pacific. And today we are going to be talking about the lecture capture world where students and teachers are you know, really delivering their, their class material online. And to help me with that conversation, Epifan is going to be talking about their Epifan Pearl family of products, which integrate with the PTZ Optics camera. So I'm excited to take a look at this with its touchscreen controller and um, all of the different devices that it offers. Uh, we do have a giveaway today, so you can enter to win a PTZ Optics camera at ptzoptics.com slash giveaway. So that's exciting. But let me introduce my guest, George Herbert from Epifan. George, how are you doing today? I'm great, Paul. How are you? Doing well. Um, let me take you out of screen share mode because I lost your video because we're using Zoom <laughs> here. There you are. Thank you for joining, George. Perfect. Yeah, no, it's great to be here. Really appreciate it. So, George, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and Epifan to get this kicked off, and then we're going to introduce both the Epifan Pearl 2, which is your new unit, and the Epifan Pearl Mini. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my name is George Herbert. I actually manage the technical support department here at Epifan Video. And at Epifan, we make video capture stuff, um, certainly focused around the Pearl family of products that we're going to talk a little bit more about. Um, and of course, we've been working with you guys at PTZ Optics for years in terms of having a lot of joint customers using your cameras with our hardware. Um, so it's always great to see the different use cases. And, and one of the big ones I think that's on everyone's mind right now is education. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of things that come along with that. Um, so it's going to be very cool to talk about that. Awesome. Well, let's jump right in. So we're going to get involved into this PowerPoint presentation. And my first question to you is, what is the Pearl? I know that Epifan comes from a capture, you know, um, product uh, creation kind of uh, history. And I've used your uh, AVIO frame grabbers, uh, capture cards to capture HDMI and SDI uh, inputs and bring them into different software, whether that be Zoom or you know something on my Windows or Mac computers, but it seems like you've kind of grown from there into offering almost a full production studio that has a, a hard drive and a touch screen. And um, you know many of our customers, especially schools and, and the education space, are using these. So what is this Epifan Pearl? Let's hear it from you since you know it probably better than anyone. Yeah. So, I mean, in the history of the company, you know, nearly 20 years ago, Epifan had created one of the very first kind of VGA to, to a USB capture cards, right? When no one really thought about capturing those kind of signals into computers. And of course, over the past, you know, two decades, things have changed a lot in, in technology. And we still do the capture card stuff. Like you mentioned, Paul, the AVIO series of capture cards we have are are very easy to use plug and play devices to get a high quality video signal into a computer and use it like a webcam. And of course, everyone's doing that these days. And so, you know, those are great, but sometimes people are looking for a little more. They're looking for, for a standalone piece of hardware that's going to do all of the capture, streaming, recording, mixing, switching, high quality video and audio all in one box. And that's kind of the idea with the Pearl is to create that all in one production solution, a mini studio in a box essentially, uh, and then add some extra pieces to it for easier integration into other third-party platforms or you know, whatever you need, whether it's streaming or recording or both at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility that we've tried to pack in there with as many professional features as we can while also making it as easy to use as possible. Uh, that's kind of the philosophy around the Pearl family. Um, it started a number of years ago with the first generation Pearl, which, which has been kind of put out to pasture since then. Uh, and now we have two models, the Pearl Mini and the Pearl 2. Um, so those are kind of the main flagship products for Epifan at this point. And uh, we see them used in a huge, huge numbers of ways. But education is definitely one of the more exciting ones. And, uh, and I always like talking about that one because those are the, the feel-good stories that, that make you happy that you're helping other people. So uh, it's always fun. 
Well, that's what I'd like to focus on today is the education side of this. But obviously, I remember my very first Epifan Pearl. It was really what I learned how to live stream with. And I don't have any pictures of it, but if you go back five, six years on our YouTube channel, I live streamed concerts and it was kind of like my go-to everything in a box um, streaming system. It was what I literally learned on. Um, and one of the great things about this device is, as you can see here, it has a touchscreen. Um, so this is a full touchscreen capability thing. We'll take a look at it in more detail with George today. I have a few NDI video sources coming in. We're going to touch on NDI a little bit, but first let's talk about the differences between the Pearl Mini and the full Pearl 2. Yeah, so the primary difference is really a matter of scale. Um, the Pearl Mini was actually designed and really geared towards the education market with lecture capture. So it's a little bit smaller, has less inputs, but has a much larger touch screen because it's often used sitting on a table or sitting on a desk, or in some cases, it even has VESA mounts on the back. You could bolt it to something. Um, but the idea being having a small form factor device with two to three video inputs, high quality audio inputs with XLR, quarter inch TRS jacks, being able to do mixing and switching between all those things. Whereas the Pearl 2 is kind of the bigger brother. So it essentially is twice of everything. It has four HDMI inputs, two SDI inputs, has much more XLR audio inputs. It supports things like NDI, chroma keying, and a few more advanced features that you might find in a much larger environment or in, say, a studio. Um, so really, their overall concept is extremely similar. The user interface is virtually identical. So their ease of use is very much the same. It's really, you know, how many inputs do you need uh, and, and where do you need to send it? <laughs> what other kind of signals do you need? Something like NDI. Both can integrate with Panopto, which we're going to talk about as well. So it's kind of, you know, Pearl Mini is the perfect fit for this more traditional classroom where you might only have two video inputs with a single camera and a, maybe a presentation share. Where Pearl 2 might go into the larger auditorium space where you have three or four cameras and NDI sources and a whole bunch of other stuff that you're making a big, big production out of. Uh, maybe it's graduation, <laughs> something like that. Well, yes, and I one of the things I really love about um, the Pearl is that it really does combine the audio mixer, the video switcher, the recording, the hard drive, and all of those things into one easy to use system, as you said. So yeah. um, I remember, you know, before this, having to manage what's my computer, what's my audio mixer, what is my video switcher, and all of those things together. So it really simplifies things, especially for those who are just getting started with streaming. Well, absolutely. And again, the other advantage of looking at things that are dedicated standalone appliances, and, and I mean, you could say this in general across technology, but certainly within the video and, and AV spaces is that you can do a lot of these things with a computer, but you're often hanging so many extra bits off of the computer, whether you're trying to bring in multiple capture cards or audio devices, or you're installing all kinds of different software to make these bridges between different things. And then you're still underneath it dealing with potentially an unreliable PC that you have to maintain. And, you know, for anyone who's, this actually happened to one of my colleagues a couple of days ago, luckily not during one of our live events, but just in the middle of his workday, Windows decided, despite his update schedule, to just reboot in the middle of the day. That's a risk when you have a Windows PC running a lot of this stuff. And if this is mission critical or is an education scenario, you can't have that happening. You can't have it go down. A dedicated standalone piece of hardware, the Pearls, they're not based on Windows. They are built to this task. This is all that they do. That risk is minimized or, or non-existent in the sense of you don't have to worry about little, you know, a USB cable to your capture card going bad or your external audio device maybe failing or the computer just going down entirely. You know, Pearl kind of gets away from those uh, risks of, of the standard PC market. So you're dealing with something that's built to be very reliable, built to be robust, and is easier to use. Uh, there's great software out there. I know, Paul, you and I are both big fans of things like OBS for live streaming. But you can't just put anybody in front of OBS. It's, it takes a while to learn it and get used to it. 
where we've tried to make sure that Perl is, is super powerful and super flexible, but also that just about anybody could learn to use. Um, I literally have taught people how to use Perl in five minutes or less. And that's kind of the objective is, is to make sure that, that people can get up and running and get the most out of it really quickly um, and not confuse them. <laughs> Well, and I do want to take a look at the Perl interface uh, if we have time today because it is so yeah. easy to use. I've got it right here ready to show. Um, but looking at the Perl Mini first, um, mm -hmm. what, what was the inspiration here? I mean, I understand you lowered the cost, right? Um, but you still have a, an, a decent amount of connectivity here. Um, so this must have opened up a lot of doors for Perl users. Yeah. And like I said, lecture capture was probably one of the biggest design motivators for the Perl Mini just so happens that that similar use case translates into a ton of other stuff, including just small scale live events where you might only have two or three cameras or two cameras in a presentation. Um, so making it as small as possible to make it portable was important. Uh, and so we kind of just looked at, okay, what do we have to do to make something as portable as possible? So we wanted to have a mix of different video inputs, uh, things like SDI, so that you can use super high quality PTZ optics cameras, for example, and still run wiring long distance if you have to, but still have HDMI inputs at the same time so that you can plug pretty much anything into it from computers or specialized equipment or just other more consumer oriented cameras in some cases. Audio wise, making sure that we had XLR, TRS jacks, that can be line level or mic level and can even provide phantom power means that you could plug two XLR mics directly into Perl Mini and have nothing else. So you could really do a run and gun style thing with a Perl Mini um, as long as you have power, basically. Um, again, you know, just learned a lot of lessons from previous generations about how it was going to be easier to use for many people. So then we still wanted to make sure that, well, maybe you have a USB document camera. We need to support USB cameras. Uh, maybe the cameras are still out of reach of an SDI cable physically. So let's support our TSP so we can bring in IP-based cameras. Uh, and just kind of giving all these different options so that people have a range of possibilities uh, on a single device that they can standardize on, but still gives them flexibility. The other thing we learned from previous generations was storage wise, not everyone wants to have built in storage. So we went to using a removable SD card on the mini. Um, and again, some people don't want storage at all because they're using it as purely a streaming appliance. So take the SD card out if you want um, and use it purely for live streaming. So there's just kind of little things in there that, that we've tried to uh, improve and, and help people. And, and like I said, it's been extremely popular, especially recently in the education market, but we've seen it in everything. We have live event companies that use them as part of their rental fleet to just send to people to run their own events uh, because it's that easy to use. They can feel comfortable to just put it in a box and send it to someone who's never seen it before and they're up and running pretty quickly. And so to me, that's that's kind of speaks to the success of, of the design and the intention there. Yeah, and the, the big old touchscreen, which can be customized to do almost anything, which is you know, speaks to how flexible it is, the networking part, I'm sure the educational institutions love because they can manage it remotely and we'll take a look yeah. at that. But these, the way that you have designed it with these layouts, it really makes it so that anybody can use it. Um, and you know, so my hats are off to you guys there. We did try it with some USB cameras and it uh, worked great. So we, we tried it with our webcam. But of course, we've tried it with the you know, HDMI and SDI inputs there. On the front, you can just see there's you know a light to let you know there's power, a light to let you know when it's streaming, and a light to let you know it's recording. And then you have that SD card port in there, uh, which makes it obviously an affordable and easy way to offload um, the video that you've recorded. Is that the only way to, uh, is that the hard drive on the device essentially, that SD port? Yeah, so the SD card is, um, but of course the USB ports, we could transfer files to USB storage or how most people use it, um, at least commonly, is to send those files over the network, either to just a generic file server, or they're doing an integration like we're gonna talk about in more detail with something like Panopto. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities there, again, depending on what the workflow is. Now you mentioned the lights on the front, Paul, and, and actually 
we do our weekly live show on Thursdays. You guys do it on Wednesdays. Um, and, and this week, we're actually talking about something which is a fairly basic topic, but I'll bring it up here as well. And that is we very recently, in a firmware update on the Pearls, added support for busy lights so that you could plug in one of these busy lights. And some people may be familiar with these, just a USB busy light that they might plug into their computer to give their on-air status for something like a Zoom meeting. You can now plug in one of these to a Pearl so that it'll give you uh, those, those kind of status lights for recording and streaming at a distance. So you might hang this at the front of the class or outside the classroom so that people know they're being recorded. And in many places, that's a requirement where there's an assumption you're being recorded, but you still have to give them a clear indicator of when that's actually happening for liability reasons. So we've tried to improve that by adding the support for the busy lights. And this is just one I have as an example here at my house, but um, there's a couple other models we can support as well. So if anyone's more interested in, in that specific feature, our live show tomorrow at three o'clock Eastern, we're going to dive into some of the support for those. Sweet. That is great. And I, again, it, it's so easy with like a touch screen. You've got the little lights here to show off, you know, what, what the yeah. status is, but for a teacher to just know for sure that they are being recorded or, you know, videos being sent to a content management uh, system is great. And so let's move on to the Pearl 2, which um, yeah. has some of the same things, as you mentioned, double of almost everything, but it also yeah. adds the NDI support, which is uh, how I'm using it now. And again, if we have time, I'd like to take a look at the NDI specific stuff at the end, but this is much bigger and you you even yeah. have a uh, like a dual rack mounted unit with looks like a looks like a I don't even know what that looks like. It's a double <laughs> double size, double wide. Yeah, so it, it's funny because Pearl two the the two is a good indicator of a lot of things. It was the second generation of Pearl, in fact. Uh, Mini was kind of the third in a way, um, but it kind of doubled up on everything. And so there's four HDMI inputs and two SDI inputs. So double the number of physical inputs compared to its little brother in the Pearl Mini, but it does support you know USB and RTSP just like it's the Mini does. But it also, just being a bigger, more powerful box, also can support things like NDI, chroma keying. Um, and then we have three physical variants of it. The, the one we kind of call the portable version of the desktop one, and that's the one you have there, Paul. We even ship it in a hard case, a Pelican style case, so that that's kind of the portability aspect of it. You could make it as part of your flight rig if you want. Then we also have rack mount versions. And many people prefer the rack mount versions because it's going to be installed in a rack with a bunch of other gear. Maybe it's in a closet uh, or something like that. So we have a single rack mount version, which is basically the same as the portable, just in a standard 19 inch rack to you. And then we have the twin version, which you have there in the pictures. The twin is basically about high density install. It's two separate Pearl 2s sharing the same 19 inch 2U chassis. They're independent of each other. Mm. And the idea there is that some of our customers, especially our bigger customers in the pro AV space, they're gonna be using multiple units anyways but they don't want to eat up a ton of rack space. So instead of eating up four U of rack space with multiple single racks, they might buy the twin version to keep it down to two U and still have multiple units. So it's a little more of a niche one, uh, but we definitely have seen it a lot at the top end of the pro AV space where maybe it's being used as a hot standby or just balancing multiple things at the same time. Uh, there's, there's a lot you could do with it if you want. Um, so yeah, we kind of have a, a version that fits just about anybody's use case from the mini to the different vari variations of Pearl 2. Um, but again, the UI looks basically the same. The general concept is the same. There's just more inputs and more power packed into it. I have here my case that I've used on many live productions, and that's exactly what it what it's for. It fits perfectly in here. It's small. And to think that this is your audio mixer, your video, you know, inputs and your computer kind of all in one. Um, it, it is really great. And we didn't even, I don't even think we're going to have time to touch on the iPad, you know, touchscreen <laughs> integration that you guys have, but let's talk about Panopto now. So I, yeah. I want to make sure we, we talk about this. It's a really powerful video management platform um, that, you know, can be for recording and you can even do streaming. Obviously it's a great place for students to interact with and search through 
Um, they have this really cool way where you can have two live video feeds or two video feeds that you can kind of switch between as a student to see what, what you're most interested in and what you need to see more detail on. Um, let's talk a little bit about your integration with Panopto and how you're seeing mm -hmm. it deployed. Yeah, so we've been working with Panopto for quite some time um, in various different ways. Uh, many, many years ago, we worked with you know their desktop software with our capture cards. But as the demands for hardware like the Pearls has increased and, and as people have tried to go to the dedicated appliances, Panopto kind of also realized that was an important part of their workflow. And so we worked with them to create a direct integration between the Pearl hardware encoders and Panopto. And essentially what it means is you can register a Pearl as a resource within Panopto. And when you create your scheduling, let's say it's your full class schedule for the entire semester in Panopto, Pearl essentially becomes an automated box. It downloads a copy of that schedule for that particular physical classroom it's sitting in. And all of the start stop streaming and uploading of content back to Panopto is all automated. So it really becomes a super, super easy way for the administrators to get everything done and just, yeah, just kind of automate a lot of that workflow. In addition to that, you can also create ad hoc events directly from the Perl or from the Panopto side to start and stop a live stream or a recorded event um, without a pre-scheduled uh, setup. So this means that maybe a Pearl is sitting in a, in a studio space in a university, and we have a lot of customers doing that these days, and someone needs to come in and work on a project that they're recording or streaming, or maybe it's a professor. They can log in using the touchscreen on Pearl to their Panopto ID, and it will push the live stream of the recorded files where it needs to be for that user on Panopto. So it makes it really, really easy for someone to you know, create almost not quite literally a one button, but a pretty close to a one button studio kind of a setup where you just have everything set up all the time with, you know, a, an awesome PTZ Optics camera into a Pearl. They walk in, they log into Panopto on Pearl, and that's it. They start and stop and makes it super easy. They don't have to know much more about the inner workings of things. They're, they're just using a very simplified UI. Um, and that's, that's been really great. And we've seen a lot of schools, um, especially right now, uh, deploying Panopto and deploying hundreds of, of pearls, especially the pearl minis, uh, all over the world. Um, so it's been really exciting to see. Well, we actually have a short video that kind of shows the integration and what you're talking about, George. So why don't we, why don't we play that quickly to give everyone a sure. look at, at a kind of a live look at the way this works. In this video, we will take a look at integrating PTZ Optics cameras with a lecture capture recorder from Epifan called Pearl 2. We will also take a look at the Pearl Mini, which is a more affordable option available for lecture capture, which can also be integrated into Panopto and used with PTZ Optics cameras. For many installations, it is nice to simplify video capture with lecture capture recorders like the Epifan Pearl, which can automatically publish and manage video securely in a video management system like Panopto. For this example, we can connect our PTZ Optics camera to the Epifan Pearl via SDI and our presentation laptop via HDMI. But it's also worth noting that the Epifan Pearl does support NDI and will work with the PTZ Optics NDI cameras connected on your local area network. To get started, let's turn on the Epifan Pearl. The Pearl can be used for local recordings, live streaming, and multi-camera switching. All Epifan Pearl models include seamless integration with Panopto, allowing you to schedule recorded events, webcasts, and even ad hoc video events. For scheduled events, these can be set up through your Panopto account, like you'd imagine. The Pearl unit will stay synchronized with all of your events and show them to you on the touchscreen or web you when you have an event about to start, you will see a countdown timer and preview for your video. If you want to start early, you can simply click the video event button and you are off. Epifan Pearl encoders make it easy to capture multiple simultaneous HD video feeds. With Panopto, those feeds are automatically synchronized for viewing in Panopto's unique interactive video player, providing your audience with the highest quality 
multi-camera playback experience. PTZ Optics cameras make it easy to zoom into exactly what you want to record. For example, you could zoom into a whiteboard space and even call camera presets to zoom into specific areas of interest that you want to capture in your video. If you have multiple cameras, you can show them in a picture-in-picture -picture layout using the Epifan Pearls layout options. Or you can use multiple cameras with multiple angles to create more engaging videos. In this example, you can see a camera one has two views and camera two also has two views. If you're using PTZ camera presets for each camera, it can look like you have a four camera setup using only two cameras. Together, Epifan, Panopto, and PTZ Optics create perfect setups for lecture capture systems with exceptional video quality and user experiences. So there we go. That's just a little live look at uh, some of the great footage that you guys helped, helped us put together with the Panopto integration. Yeah, I think what I one of the things I actually love about that video, Paul, is some of the shots in there are actually of the original generation Pearl. Um, and funny enough, just through firmware updates, it has the same Panopto integration functionality that the Pearl Mini or the Pearl 2 does. So if anyone out there still has one of those boxes that they're using actively and is maybe looking at Panopto, you could still use your original Pearl in the same way. Um, and that's another one of the important things for us here at Epifan is making sure that, you know, we roll out these updates uh, periodically to, to try and improve different experiences based on feedback we're getting from those customers. So even someone who bought a Pearl two, two years ago can do the firmware update and get the Panopto stuff. Uh, I mentioned the one with the busy lights. We recently added some other stuff for more newer streaming protocols. And so we're always looking at new ways of adding functionality to the pearls as the needs in the market changes and the feedback we get from the field kind of tells us what people want and what they need. You know, Tess uh, has a sister-in-law, I believe, who uses the pearl with her PTZ Optics camera at our local high school. And uh, Tess, you might want to let her know about that because I think she has an original pearl, Pearl 1. So we'll see about she that. She does. She actually had that before she got her PTZ Optics camera. So we'll have to let her know about that. Yeah. Yeah. There's Again, we're always just looking to add stuff and, and hopefully improve people's ability to, to do the live streams and the records that, that have become so important these days. So with that, you can create events quickly. Uh, in Panopto uh, from the Epifan Pearl, or, or it can be synchronized back from Panopto into the Pearl, and you can mm -hmm. manage schedule events so everything stays in sync. Um, but I wanted to, just because we're, we're almost at a half hour here, George, I wanted to talk about NDI now. Um, because, and, I, and I wanted to save this for the folks who stayed because it's a little bit more advanced and we're going to get a little bit more technical, but it really does open a lot of doors for integrating cameras uh, specifically the NDI cameras from all kinds of companies, including PTZ Optics, that can now directly be ingested into the Pearl via you know, the new tech NDI. So let's take a look at this. Um, there's these new workflows out there, George, and it, they're getting large and expansive. I think in many, many cases, we've got this picture that I'd like to show that shows the network in the middle, which is the local area network. And we have a bunch of different sources on this network that uh, I think is becoming more and more common, um, whether it's a laptop that's running the NDI um, set up, or we have NDI cameras, there's NDI converters now, um, even Skype, for example, has an NDI output. Um, so those we're calling NDI inputs here, there's just a ton of ways to bring all of that directly into the Pearl. Yeah, so NDI is supported on, on Pearl 2, and we can support... Um, depending on how you want to word it, uh, New Tech has their own approach, but full, regular, whatever, NDI, as well as NDI HX. We can bring those in as inputs on the Pearl 2. And the cool part, as you mentioned, Paul, is that with NDI, you're opening up an ecosystem that is massive. There's so many different things possible over NDI now. Uh, cameras are obviously one of the most obvious choices, 
But the NDI toolkit software installed on a PC can do all kinds of things in multiple directions, both as an output or an input. So you could bring, let's say, an NDI output from a Perl into a PC running those tools that's then going to act as a virtual camera for something like Zoom. Um, there's lots of ways of kind of creating these interops between all these different products. And, you know, it starts with a really high quality camera, could be NDI, send it anywhere on the network into your Perl. That then translates into your production workflow for a bunch of different things. So NDI is really exciting in that way because there's so many ways you can use it and, uh, and everyone's finding a new way to do it. It seems almost every day. It does. And if we bring that chart up one more time, Mike, um, I want to show the output side of this as well, because it's almost equally as important in many ways, where now we can bring the NDI output right into Zoom. So if you're doing a bunch of great stuff in Perl and you want to tie in some distance learning, you can bring that into, into Zoom, for example, or any of these cloud-based video communication softwares. But also uh, overflow rooms, you know, the, you can use the NDI studio monitor to show the output of the Perl, which, you know, has two HDMI outputs, but if it's on the other side of your campus, you know, running yeah. HDMI is not necessarily going to work for you. So yeah, exactly. This is a concept I think a lot of people are becoming more and more familiar with. Um, yeah. Really quickly wanted to give an example of bandwidth because that's what we're talking about here is using bandwidth that's available on your local area network. Um, if we're using scan converter or a laptop to show PowerPoint slides, we are eating up 125 megabits of bandwidth. Assuming you have a gigabit network, that's 12 and a half percent. So it's, 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 you know, it's, it's worth tallying up to see how far you go. Um, if you're using an NDI monitor for overflow, that's another 125 megabits. That's getting you up to 250, another 12%. And then the PTZ optics cameras, this is the point to, to make um, it's interesting is that the HX stands for high efficiency. So those only take, you know, 12 to 20 megabits per second, depending on the settings that you have set up. They take a lot less, only 1.2% of your gigabit network switch. But even with all of that running, so sending an HD video source into your Perl, receiving a source from your Perl to an overflow and ingesting three NDI cameras. And I want to show that off next in a moment, how easy that is you're still only at 25% of a gigabit switch. Now, a lot of schools have 10 gigabit or more bandwidth on their network, but just wanted to show that as an example. Um, you guys produced a really great, great quick start guide on bringing the Pearl uh, and the PTZ Optics cameras together using NDI. And since we're limited on time, I'm just going to point people to your YouTube channel. It's a great video that explains kind of how to set up the camera from start to finish, the, all the networking stuff. Because, George, I really wanted to get into the Pearl itself that I have sitting here. Mm -hmm. And because we haven't done that yet, um, and I've got it here. It's, I've got two NDI sources coming into it right now. Um, and I just thought we should show off how easy this is to use and customize to do just a little bit of a live demo here. In fact, this source is actually uh, coming from uh, our video production system. So this is a, a full NDI source. And then um, this channel here is an actual NDI HX source. You can see that the video quality is almost negligible. It's interesting how they both look really good. But George, let's just start to finish, kind of look at this just to show how easy it is to, you know, kind of start from, like you said, teaching somebody in just five minutes how this works. Yeah. So within the pearls, one of the other things that Pearl can do is create multiple channels. And within the Epifan world, a channel is an encoder. Um, so that means that on something like Pearl 2, where you could potentially have as many as six separate channels, that means you could have as many as six separate encoders running simultaneously. So that gives you a lot of power for things like Panopto, where they prefer two separate encodes and they merge together later. But it also means that we can do like you were doing, Paul, where you have a production mix and then you have another mix. You can kind of play around with these different things. But connecting NDI sources uh, as inputs is really, really easy as just generally NDI is where, you know, you can create an input. It auto detects NDI things on the network. You add it as an input. It then shows up in your list so that within your encoding channel, when you're building layouts, 
you can just select it from the list. And then it's a click and drag style interface to choose the size and the positioning of whatever you want. So then you could start mixing in your other NDI sources, you know, bring them together as a side by side or picture in picture, whatever it is that you want. Um, and really define that layout to be really only limited by your creativity, to be honest. Um, and that gives us a lot of, a lot of power. The other thing that we could do, depending on the tools you're using, and we do this ourselves quite a bit, is if you have a computer running software that can output NDI, including things like alpha channel over NDI, um, we support that as well on an NDI input. So you could have you know, live titling happening um, using NDI with alpha channel support to kind of, again, bring up the level of the quality of your production. Um, overlay that on top of your cameras or, or whatever it is that you're producing and, and really just play around and, and make it whatever you want it to be. It's not based on templates like so many broadcast pieces are. Um, you can just kind of do whatever you want or need to do. Maybe re-encode it using those multiple channels in multiple ways uh, to, to stream it out or record it at different quality levels or maybe one is just going to be an NDI feed to, like we said, a breakout room. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of possibilities there. So you see that I just created one extra channel there. And so now the touch screen is something we haven't really talked too much about, but yeah. you can just simply kind of see all of your layouts and then it's just click to go live. So it's just so easy. There's that side by side that I just created. Yeah. Yeah. And the touch screen can be an important thing because, you know, as, as a lot of, a lot of the guys who are there in the traditional broadcast space, they really love the old T-bar thing, right? And, and that's super cool. It's fun to play with. But when you're starting to look at tools like that, you're talking about, you know, often dealing with people who have many, many years of experience. And especially when we're talking about education, or Paul, you and I have talked about this a lot in, in other events, the house of worship space, especially now, you're usually dealing with operators who don't have years and years of experience or don't have years and years of education in that specific thing. They're, they're people who are just having to do it because they're thrown into it. So trying to make sure that things are super easy to use is important. And the touchscreen helps because they don't have to understand this massive broadcast console. They just need to be able to visually see what it is and tap on it. Everyone's used to using their smartphones and tablets these days. So the more interface we can create that's like that, that's more familiar to people, that's visual and, and just touch, uh, really helps break down those barriers between, you know, the, the longstanding 25-year veteran in the TV world to the professor who doesn't know anything about it but needs to deliver that class. Uh, that's kind of our objective there again with the Pearl. Cool. Well, let's open it up to questions at this point. We have a giveaway. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a giveaway winner and we're going to do our giveaway wheel like we do every week. But I got one question for you right off the bat here coming from our good friend, outcast.com, Chad Burton. He's saying, we might have already covered this, but for local video on the Pearl 2, um, do, can we play video locally or does it, that come over NDI from a laptop? So uh, it depends on what you mean by playback. Um, so the recorded files that live on Perl, uh, you can play them back in a web browser interface, which is kind of the main administrative aspect of Perl. Um, or you could, of course, download those files and, and play them back on a computer. Um, NDI would be a live feed. Um, so it would essentially just be a live NDI stream coming from Perl. Uh, so for live monitoring or for a live breakout room, NDI or even the HDMI outputs uh, are a great tool for that. But if it's going back and looking at previously recorded files, um, you can play them in a browser on, a, on basically anything that has a browser, uh, or you would download those files to play them back. Well, this happens every show, something that surprises me. But our friend Chad Burton, um, who just asked that question, won the giveaway. <laughs> this happens every time. It's like, oh, because there's not that many people that enter the giveaways every time. So Chad, congratulations. We are going to spin the wheel for you. And then if there's any other questions, uh, throw them in the chat and George and I will try to answer them for you. All right, here we go, Chad. Going to spin the wheel. Might get lucky here. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
You like to me mesmerize them, Mike? Just before they <laughs> either win. <gasps> oh, you won the webcam light. Okay. Woo! Yay. All right. Okay, George. Well, I have to say thank you so much for spending this much time with us. I obviously learned a few things. And um, you guys are doing great things out there. I, I end up liking this, this pearl the more I use it. Uh, and I, today I spent a lot more time with it. And I, I really enjoyed it. The NDI stuff's incredible. These guys have a great tutorial video. There are a few things, a few steps to making NDI work that you should take a look at. Um, but it all does work great. And it opens up a lot of great doors. I want to spend more time on Panopto in the future because there's some interesting things there. We just did kind of a high level look at Panopto. Maybe we'll do we'll do a deep dive one of these days, George. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure to join you anytime, Paul. I uh, haven't seen each other in person in quite some time and it doesn't look like probably will anytime soon. So <laughs> it's great to join you virtually anytime. Well, thank you, George. And we have a few people on our Zoom meeting. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone in our Zoom meeting here if anybody has any thoughts for George before we head out, um, George can hear you. Um, <laughs> ask away. Ask away. But otherwise, uh, not. Tess, how do you miss George? You miss seeing him at NAB every year. I do miss seeing everybody at NAB, and the Epifan folks are definitely included in that. There was a question on Facebook. I don't know if you had time to cover. I have sure. lots of time. <laughs> okay, great. Steven says, can you switch cameras with the touch screen like a video switcher? Yes. Yeah. So you would create layouts um, of whatever those layouts are made up of, um, which could obviously just be cameras. And then you can switch those layouts from the touch screen. Paul showed that a little bit there. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do that. Or you can do it in the, in the web browser-based UIs uh, if you want to do it more remotely. Um, there's a number of ways to, to do it. Um, we even have an integration for control systems with Crestron if you wanted to have a full Crestron system set up. So there's lots of ways in the Pearl to kind of control that switching aspect. Great, thank you. Thank you, Geraldine, who's been helping answer some questions in the YouTube chat. There was one more from Dean. I'm not sure if you covered, Paul, maybe I missed it, about built-in image storage. We did, we covered that one. Okay, good. All right, well, that's it for me then. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks again so much, George. It's always a pleasure. That's our show, everybody. So have a nice rest of your day and thank you for tuning in. Thanks so much, everyone.